So everybody, just one day after Apple released iOS and iPadOS 18 to the entire public, we just got 18.1 beta 4 to all developers to test out, to try out, and see exactly what new features have come, what bugs have been squashed, and to see if it's a viable option now for somebody to jump into the developer beta. So without further ado, let's see exactly what Apple gave us with iPadOS 18.1 beta 4. Well everybody, here we have it. We are now dealing with iPadOS 18.1 beta 4. And to give you an idea on the build size, we're looking at about 1.17 gigabytes in terms of actual build size. So give yourself at least three gigs of open storage in order to get this installed and installed correctly. And then if you go into our settings, go into the about and go to the iPadOS version, we're looking at 18.122B 5045G. That is the build number of this one, meaning we're getting closer and closer to the RC edition, but I do think we're a ways away in terms of actually getting an Apple Intelligence and 18.1 coming to the public. I believe probably towards the end of October is when you'll see an official release, perhaps alongside some new hardware that people are talking about already. And now before we get into the what's new, I do want to briefly talk about battery life to see how it's been doing. I am rocking an M4 iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch version, so I should have probably the best battery life situation. As you can see, I don't really do the best battery practices. My auto lock is set to never. I always rock with high brightness. But if we go over the last 10 days, again, I was recently on vacation, so I didn't use it too much. But on a day like Monday, we had seven hours and 30 minutes of screen on time, only using 75% of my battery with LumaFusion, YouTube, and X being the main applications that I was using. So on any normal day, I'd probably get at least 10 hours of battery life on that situation. But then you have a day like last Tuesday where I was dealing with only two hours and 20 minutes of screen on time, but it did suck up about 50% of my battery, meaning on this day, I was only gonna get about five hours of total battery life. And if we go on Monday, we had about four and a half hours of screen on time with less than 75%, probably 65% battery taken up here. I can probably get seven, eight hours on this day. So it all really depends on which applications you're using, how intense they are, how task intensive they are, how many things you're doing at once, and all things start to contribute to your battery life. But again, as of right now, the M4 iPad Pro has been absolutely amazing in terms of battery life for me. And then in terms of what's new with this beta 4 update specifically, there isn't too much visually that has changed. The first one that we did notice was actually in control center and we did get a couple of changes in the control center. So if I swipe down, as we know, these are all now paginated. So there's different pages for each subject. And the first thing that I noticed is this new home kit button or this new Apple home button. Now this Apple home button was able to be added before, but now it is added here by default on this page. So if you tap into it, it's gonna take you directly into the home application. Whereas with beta three, that wasn't there whatsoever. However, beta 3 had this whole section blank right here and you would need to actually go to the application in order to get in there or add the actual control center widget manually. And then if you swipe down for the connectivity section, it also has a new fresh look. It just has a new look by default. So you still have the two by two squares for the main ones, but then airplane mode is now one long one. And from the iOS version, I know that cell phone connectivity is similar to airplane mode. So it's just a new default look to control center. And I do not believe it's anything that's gonna change functionally. And then another one that came up is when you are typing to Siri with the new Apple intelligence, if you double tap on the home bar, you are able to type to Siri. And what's new with the beta four update is that you now get normal typing suggestions or Siri suggestions to auto complete your sentences. So if I start to type and say hello, it'll start to auto correct for me, which is something that wasn't around there before. So if I type in, how are you? You can just use it as if you are texting something normal and then you send it in and then Siri will answer you in response. So having Apple suggestions or autocomplete suggestions is something that was missing with Siri on beta three with 18.1 and now it is there. It still remains yet to be seen if the non-Apple intelligence supported devices will be getting this type of kind of communication and type to talk to Siri itself, but we'll see as time goes on. Now, unfortunately, things like Genmoji and Image Playgrounds are still being omitted by Apple, and I do believe that's gonna be some sort of 18.2 update. But one thing I did wanna show off is that if you show the actual emoji picker right here, and then you swipe up, you get to see that there's more options that are coming up. But one thing that I noticed that is if you go here to select some of these and emojis, which we've had in the past, and you press this plus button, this is kind of a broken situation, and I believe this is where it's gonna look like or where it's gonna be where we start to create the Genmojis or the Image Playgrounds. As you can see, there's something happening here that's kind of happening in the OS. There's even something right there that's happening, which again, it's still very buggy. Keep in mind, this is a beta four update, but to access this, just go into any situation where you can add an emoji, and you can see that you have your plus button there. But if I keep swiping down and go to maybe my Animoji, 
you can see that it changes to the ellipses. And if I tap on the ellipses, the same thing occurs. It's just a blank kind of menu that is supposed to be something is supposed to be happening there. And it's just not there yet. I'll pull it up one more time so you guys can take a look at, into it. But all you have to do is go to your Animojis, press a plus button and leave a comment down below if you guys are actually dealing with the same thing. As you can see, there's something there that's kind of maybe hidden. I'm trying to move to the side, move to the left. It's not working. And then even something here continues to bubble up if you do look closely with some sort of animation that's probably hiding behind there. So I do believe that's where Genmojis and Image Playgrounds and Animojis are all gonna live moving forward. It just depends if we're gonna get it with 18.1 or if it's gonna be an 18.2 update maybe sometime in November or December, which is a little bit unfortunate. But outside of that, in terms of performance and stability, iPadOS 18.1 has been extremely stable. We've had some new updates with the cleanup feature, as well as all the writing tools and some updates to Siri. So I am very happy with the stability and the performance overall with Stage Manager, with everything in between, and being able to use your iPad still as your workhorse, even in this beta environment. So that's everything new with 18.1 Beta 4. If you find some other ones, please leave them in the comments down below so we can kind of check those out. But again, nothing too crazy from a visual standpoint. It's all gonna be bug fixes and stability improvements to hopefully gear us up for a few release here in October. But let's finish up this video, everybody. So as you saw with 18.1 beta 4, we are kind of getting more and more to the mature side of 18.1 meaning that it's going to be less and less actual visible and physical changes to the software because now it's at this point it's just making sure that everything is ready to go come late October when I do believe 18.1 will release with Apple intelligence and everything that comes with that. So we did get some new updates, some new visual changes, a couple of new features, but for the most part everything is just getting more and more stable and getting ready for that final RC edition and then that final release. But that'll do for this video everybody. If you learned something new, leave a comment down below and if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know that you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, definitely stay subscribed because we got a bunch more videos in the watch OS, iPad OS, iOS, Mac OS kind of situation to let you guys know exactly how to use those new softwares that you just recently installed. But that'll do it. If you want to watch more videos like this one, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video right here. And I personally think you're gonna like this video right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando and I'm out of here everybody. Peace.